the cup that contained the tea, contaminated. The seven bar staff at the hotel who took the cup away, washed it, wiped it, set it out for other guests, contaminated. The pine bar itself, contaminated and still closed, two and a half months on. Safe and sound in Moscow, Lugovoy and Kovtun protested their innocence. We sat at the table and talked for 20 or 30 minutes. I'm completely certain, I'm 100% sure, that he didn't order anything and we didn't offer anything to him. But who might have ordered the assassination? Can the trail of polonium help us with that? So what about the Kremlin? They've got history. This is the Black Lubyanka, the headquarters of the old KGB. Thousands of ordinary people were executed in the basement. The story of Soviet poisoning goes back to the early 20s. This building here is laboratory number 12, the poison factory. The question is, is it still in business? with Charles Leaf was at some point he'll make a decision to kill that woman and child. As our SWAT team started moving up the stairs, they've got their weapons at the ready. A door burst open. Here comes Charles Leaf pushing his way out. He's got the rifle over the top of them, screaming at our agents, get back, get down, get down. I thought I was going to be dead. I thought that was definitely going to happen. When that crack goes off, there's no doubt what it is. I mean, it's not a floorboard cracking or something like that. It is a rifle. Your heart beats so much you can feel it in your throat. They were asking to see if everybody was all right, and he wouldn't let us make a noise. This scientific expedition is not the first. In 1953, renowned Russian geologist Viktor Tverdoklebov was surveying the area for minerals with a group of other scientists when he witnessed a huge animal in the water. Tverdoklebov died in 2006, but his daughter, Daria Leshinova, has the vivid report he published in a respected scientific journal. Just a little above the water, we saw a big, dark, gray body. On the dark grey background, there were two clearly visible light symmetrical spots, similar to an animal's eyes. At first, it moved along the lake, then it moved towards us. Tverdoklebov and the other scientists panic and flee. When they turn around, the creature is retreating back towards the center of the lake. The object was floating quite fast. It was something alive, some kind of an animal. Explorer Igor Grishin and wildlife photographer Vladimir Medvedev head off into the center of the lake to try and capture the creature on film. We decided to go to night and in the full moon because I had data местных жителей о том, что именно ночью, именно в полнолуние, скорее всего, происходит э, подъем хозяина наверх. As well as their photographic equipment, they have basic sonar to detect movement in the water. For the first hour, all is quiet on the lake. Первое, что произошло необычное, то, что лодку потянуло на глубину. Второе, что мы увидели, эхолот э, буквально взорвался. The sonar seems to show a huge creature circling beneath their boat. И сигнал звуковой, и видео сигнал был очень сильный, отчетливый, мощный сигнал. То есть это не какая-то была видимо мелкая рыба то есть резко испортилась погода мотор не запустился мы начали нервничать 
у нас не было способов э, двигаться. Э, без мотора мы были беспомощны. Это очень было э, страшно, потому что я почувствовал себя э, дичью, которую, которую преследует. Finally, the motor comes to life, and they head to shore. А его как будто что-то отпустило. Какая-то сила отпустила его, он завелся. Rising a full three kilometers above sea level, Russia's Alps contain some of the most treacherous peaks in the world. But this untamed wilderness is undergoing a radical transformation. In just two years, the resort town of Sochi will play host to the Winter Olympics. And the Russian government is spending an astonishing 327 billion rubles to transform this mountain valley into the most high-tech winter sports complex in the world. But if a massive avalanche hit these slopes during the games, it could kill hundreds. The best defense is massive gas-powered cannons to trigger small avalanches before snow builds up to critical levels. And only one machine in the world can get these colossal weights to the remote mountaintop locations. Its revolutionary coaxial rotor system was developed in top secret at the height of the Cold War. This ingenious invention makes the KA-32 the most agile chopper in the world. Crew, Commander Vasily Ischenko. The former army pilot has over 5,000 flying hours to his name. He's one of the most skilled chopper jockeys in Russia. The situation is all the time. In principle, what we are doing now is all dangerous. 7 a.m. Today, Vasily's team has to install three avalanche cannons on Krasnaya Polyana's most remote peak, the Black Pyramid. Welcome to Emirates Stadium, home of Arsenal, one of the latest British institutions to attract the attention of a Russian oligarch. There is a battle going on for control of the club. In 2007, Arsenal was rocked when an elusive Russian billionaire bought a huge stake in the club. His name was Alicia Osmanov. We've come to Moscow to see if we can find further information about Osmanov's past. We met an investigator who spent six months trying to discover details about him. Dispatches has learned that she was hired by a company advising the Arsenal board. She'd been to the Uzbek capital, Tashkent, and tracked down one of Osmanov's jailers. Welcome to Heavy Metal Production, Russian style. This is one of the world's biggest train factories. And these workers have just three days to make a monster locomotive. If they don't, the penalty is simple. They don't get paid. And if that wasn't bad enough, Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is about to inspect the factory. But fights are breaking out. Stop, stop, stop. Workers are being sent home. And lethal errors are stopping production. In just three days, can the Nevs factory pull off a train fit for a prime minister? This is life on the line in the wild, wild east. This is the Mamiroa Reserve deep in the Brazilian Amazon. Over 22,000 square miles of luxurious rainforest and the widest waterways imaginable. Today I'm setting out with my guide, Elmir, to explore the wildlife and perhaps catch a glimpse of Mamiroa's greatest gem, the white wakari monkey. The reserve boasts 400 species of birds, including these egrets posing on the highest treetops. 
A little further down river, we disturb a sloth, watched over by a vulture. And then there are the mysterious boto, a river dolphin. And at night, caiman, eyeing up their prey. It's a warm night in the summer of 1996. She claims she hears the scurrying of tiny feet. Видишь, что-то там лежит, подошла. И вот увидела вот этого плачущего существа. Я думаю, она приняла его за ребенка и принесла домой, стала за ним ухаживать. Доверием пошла, когда она мне объяснила, что у нее там находится существо, он ребеночек. Зашла в эту комнату и, естественно, увидела это существо. Он был живой. Тамара Сеньор treats the creature as if it's her own child. И сразу как-то она имя ему дала. Алешенька хорошенький. But to Tamara Jr., nothing about the baby seems human. In particular, its strange eating habits. Он именно не то что разжевывал там ее, все как-то поглощал он ее, потому что я не замечала, что он там зубами скрипел, чванькует зубами там, ну как тут. Как-то вроде как он вроде втягивал эту пищу, так сразу почему-то у меня сложилось впечатление, что это такое неземное существо. But if it isn't human, where does it come from? Accompanied by her friend Nordinov, Tamara Jr. goes to her mother-in-law's apartment to check up on the creature. А приехала уже он. Он погиб. On the journey back to the lab, his assistant sees flashing lights in the sky, and a craft swoops down, blocking the way. Когда его везли. Группа обнаружения, то появились, как говорят, неопознанный летающий объект. И они забрали сущностную основу. Прям по дороге. Zolotov has never elaborated on this brief, puzzling statement and has refused any further interviews.